Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm here to talk to you all about something that I am really, really, really excited about. It is a plugin for DaVinci Resolve that honestly has made my life so much easier and has saved my butt on major full length feature projects that I have been color grading. Um, and I'm here to talk about it today and how you can utilize this tool in DaVinci Resolve. Now, it's not necessarily for Resolve 19, but I personally, with all the new tools like Film Look, uh, Film Look Creator and the new color slicing and a lot of other tools, I think it's probably best utilized in Resolve 19, even if it's still in beta now. But today I'm going to be talking about it and it's probably going to cover, it will help you get probably the most important thing about color grading or anything. So tune in to find out. What's going on everybody? My name is James Jackson. If you're new here, I do tips, tricks, news, and reviews for the film and video making industry. So if this is content that you like, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all the content going forth. So again, as I mentioned before, I am going to be talking about a tool that I purchased. It is a paid tool. Um, it's about $80. And I know for some that may seem quite expensive, but I will assure you this will save you so much time in, in, the, work, uh, in the workflow and it will be something that you will use constantly when you're doing your color grading workflow. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about it. And as you guys can see here, uh, I am in Resolve 19 right now and I, am, I have three different, uh, four different um, clips right here that I have. I have a red Komodo, and then I got two Sony a7S III's, and then I got a Blackmagic 4K. Now, probably one of the most important thing that we can ever do for, um, for color grading is skin tones. Skin tones is probably the the number one thing is especially trying to get skin tones from so many different cameras to match. It's a very difficult challenge. Um, there are some things that helped that has helped us it built into Resolve that has made it a little bit easier. You've got, of course, the color management. Uh, in this case, we are going into DaVinci uh, color management, HDR, DaVinci Y Gamma Intermediate, and going to a Rec 709A because we're going to the assumption that we're going to um, a social platform like YouTube. And what we see here, it's sort of like, and because of that, it sort of bring everything into a color space that DaVinci can uh, understand. Um, now, normally if you were to go to the plugins, you would have to, you know, you have to go to the qualifier and then you would have to, you know, get those qualifiers and then work your way down. And then maybe you would go to something like, the color compressor, bring that in and then, you know, find the color uh, point that you want and then you would just maybe compress the hues all together, something like that. But it's, it can be messy doing it this way. Um, and also you lose a lot of the dimensions and you kind of can make, potentially put everything and make it look flat. However, uh, this plugin, which I'm going to put at the end on the timeline. I've already have it here. It is from Mononodes and it's their utilities package. Um, that's what it's called on the website, which I will go ahead and pull up right here. This is it, the Mononodes Utilities DCTL. Um, this is where you would buy it. In euros is about 59. If you convert it to uh, American dollars, it's about $80, um, as I mentioned before. But this is probably the best thing that I could have. And I'll start off with this. Um, one, it can help you, first things first, it, what it does is if I activate it, you'll notice that all of a sudden it is green. But if I was to say with this raw, I'm gonna adjust the tint to bring this down, and pull, take away the screen, you'll notice all of a sudden this stuff goes to yellow and you see some magenta. Well, the yellow is actually the skin tone indicator line. So, which that means is that as you grab everything 
to yellow, the more that's in yellow, the more that is on the skin tone yellow. So I can do that, and if I was to also w bring this down, because it's a little, it's still a little bit warmer to, to bring some, and then if I turn this off, and I'll, let me go ahead and I'll make a duplicate, as you, so you can see the difference. So I'm gonna reset everything here, because look at the difference between that and this. Do you see how much of a difference that makes? And the skin looks perfect. And that is the key thing about the D this DCTL, is the fact that it can make skin tones, it can help you find where the skin tones are. So everything that's yellow is where the skin tone is. Everything that's magenta, that shows you where this, it leans towards magenta, green, it leans towards green. So for something like this, this is a Sony A7S3. This is a log, so we're not even working with uh, raw. If we go back to the if we go to this correction page, I like again. If you've seen my previous videos, I've talked about when you're dealing with a log, you're not dealing with raw codecs. I like color. I like white balancing through the offset because you're 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 actually doing more color heading where you take whenever you subtract blues, you're adding yellows. You take away reg, you add uh, cyan. It's a much better way of, of white balancing. So in this case, I want to maybe add a little bit more green to offset some of that magenta, to offset some of that magenta and bring it back. Because I bet, definitely want to keep it right here. Now if I was to turn this off, and now take a look at this. This is, a, and I'll go back up here so you can see, because I'll see before, where you definitely saw a lot more magenta after and the skin tone is much more in line with this and what this helps with particularly with these is that if I was to cut away it doesn't um, this helps when you start building the world out so I'm going to reset all of these and then I'm going to go to the gallery right here and I'm going to pull this up because I've already this is stuff that I've already applied so I can kind of make it easier to show how this works that even with once you using this and then pulling this up applying this this is where a look that I've I, I basically built uh, using both the film lock creator and dehancer so with dehancer I've like put in my film stock which is Fuji color superior 1600 and then I view and then I've used uh, the film look creator to basically build a look and then if you see through all these different looks that even though they're in different scenes, the scenes are completely different. Everything feels like it should be in the world. And that's the thing that I absolutely love about this, is that with this, with the DCTL, um, I'll activate this. So as you see with all of these, I've got, I've showed that I've got my Genta up here, but also it helps me sort of create dimension skin tones where that kind of match throughout. So if you see here, you know, the magentas in, the lips here, but I've got some green up top. And then same thing here is like you get, you got the magenta here, but the green up top, but I can easily just sort of take away, go back and sort of remove more of the, the greens a little bit. That's a little bit too much. Really sort of fine tune that. Probably right there. But you can see here that there's a, um, even with this, which is a very, very, very different look, we can see if we turn this off, disable this. As you all can see here, that you can go through all of these, these uh, photos, you can tell that this all feels like it belongs in the same world. At the, and that's sort of the thing you want to do, regardless if you're working with multiple cameras. Because look, if you're a colorist, you're going to run into situations where you are going to be recording, um, you're going to be using multiple cameras. So having the ability to just have everything feel like um, it should be in the same world, even especially with interviews, because sometimes you may be using two completely different cameras in the same interview, or you might be color grading stuff that's in the very different interviews. So you want everything to sort of feel like it should be in the same world. And that's sort of what we get here with this, just be, and using the mono nodes utility tool, we're able to have the skin at least 
be consistent. And that honestly is like maybe, maybe not 90%, but maybe somewhere between 75 and 80% because the skin is what we sort of perceive and what helps us make the world feel consistent. And having the skin tones, getting be able to nail those skin tones regardless of whatever camera you're using, whatever lens that, that your clients may have given you, to just build something that feels like it's in the same world helps so much. Uh, but this is it for me, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I would love to know what you guys think. Let me know. Leave your comments down below. And as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care, everyone.